evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to this evening Eucharistic celebration, Ash Wednesday. The Mass intentions will be read before the Mass. In thanksgiving, Benedict Pearl So Sui Chin, for special intentions, Alfonso Chong and family, Deborah L. Angelia and family, Derek Lazaru and family, Jude and Annie Jonathan, Matthew Liu and family, Thomas So and family. For the special intentions of the community of St. Joseph's Church and the restorations of St. Joseph's Church. For the souls of the faithful departed, Aloysius and Catherine Pinto, Bertie Henry Danker, Bertram and Gladys Sia, Celine Abercook, Se Chua Paul Robert, Father Paul Tong, and for all the souls in purgatory. Please rise. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Joel. Now, now, it is the Lord who speaks. Come back to me with all your heart, fasting, weeping, mourning. Let your heart be broken, not your garment torn. Turn to the Lord your God again, for he is all tenderness and compassion, slow to anger rich in graciousness and ready to relent. Who knows if he will not turn again, will not relent, will not leave a blessing as he passes, oblation and libation for the Lord your God? Sound a trumpet in Zion, order a fast, proclaim a solemn assembly, call the people together. Summon the community, assemble the elders, gather the children, even the infants at the breast. 
Let the bridegroom leave his bedroom, and the bride her alcove. Between vestibules and altar, let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, lament. Let them say, Spare your people, Lord. Do not make your heritage a thing of shame, a byword for the nations. Why should it be said among the nations, Where is their God? Then the Lord, jealous on behalf of his land, took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let our response to the word of God is, Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion, blot out my offence. Or wash me more and more from my guilt, and cleanse me from my sin. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. My offences truly I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned. What is evil in your sight I have done. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. A pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Give me again the joy of your help. With a spirit of fervour, sustain me. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We are ambassadors for Christ. It is as though God were appealing through us, and the appeal that we make in Christ's name is, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made the sinless one into sin, so that in him we might become the goodness of God. As his fellow workers, we beg you once again not to neglect the grace of God that you have received. For he says, At the favorable time I have listened to you, on the day of salvation I came to your help. Well now is the, time, is the favorable time. This is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. <clears throat> Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. A pure heart create for me, O God, and give me again the joy of your help. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be careful not to parade your good deeds before men to attract their notice. By doing this, you will lose all reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give alms, do not have it trumpeted before you. This is what the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win men's admiration. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you give alms, your left hand must not know what your right is doing. Your almsgiving must be secret, and your Father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not imitate the hypocrites. 
They love to say their prayers standing up in the synagogues and at the street corners for people to see them. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you pray, go to your private room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in that secret place, and your Father, who sees all that is done in secret, will reward you. When you fast, do not put on a gloomy look as the hypocrites do. They pull long faces to let men know they are fasting. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that no one will know you are fasting except your Father, who sees all that is done in secret. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart with fasting and weeping and mourning. That expression, with all your heart, is important. It means a radical and profound conversion, not just a change of external behavior, but a change of heart and mind that will become the wellspring in us of a new life a life that is truly centered in God, in knowing, loving, and serving Him. But we may ask, is such a return to God, such a conversion possible? And the answer is yes. Yes, because the prophet Joel tells us, the Lord your God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishing. My brothers and sisters, it is possible if we trust and rely on God's grace and His mercy and not on our own strength. To return to the Lord is possible as a grace, for it is God's own work and the fruit of our faith in His mercy. That is why today we respond with the psalm, Create a clean heart in me, O God, and put a steadfast spirit within me. With all sincerity, we have to acknowledge our sinfulness, like King David, for I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, Thee only have I sinned and done which is evil in your sight. And then humbly beg God for the grace of conversion. Conversion happens when the grace of God penetrates and deeply shakes us, awakens our conscience, makes us understand God's love for us, so that like the prodigal son in the parable, we come to our senses and decide to go back to our Father who is waiting for us, telling Him with a humble and contrite heart, I have sinned against you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. In the second reading, these words of St. Paul, uh, <clears throat> makes us send that urgency to correspond to the grace that God is offering us in this holy season of Lent. He says, We beg you once again not to neglect the grace of God. See how St. Paul earnestly exhorts us that we cannot let this moment pass. It is given to us as a unique and unrepeatable opportunity. So there is no room for half-heartedness in our response. 
no room for procrastination, no room for negligence. Lent is like a, the compendium of our life, which is a constant returning to God, making more room for God in our life until He truly reigns in our life. And the path of this returning to God goes through the Paschal mystery, the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which we will celebrate in Holy Week. In our life, what does the Paschal mystery mean? It means our dying to sin. It means our loving obedience to God's will. It means our rising again to a new life, growing in our love for God and others. And my brothers and sisters, we travel this path, especially during Lent, through the traditional practices that we heard in today's gospel, the prayer, almsgiving, and fasting. These practices express the needed change in our relationship with God, which is prayer. A relationship with others, which is the almsgiving or charity. And a relationship with our own self, fasting. And these practices are interconnected. Fasting is not simply giving up chocolate or giving up coffee or smoking. Fasting is oriented to making us overcome our self-absorption, our egoism, in order to be able to reach out more to others, those who are needy, and also those who live with us, our own, uh, the members of our family, to show our care for them. And in order to have, of course, a more intimate friendship with God through prayer. Uh, Pope Francis proposed for our Lenten journey this year the words of St. Paul in the letter to the Galatians, let us not grow tired of doing good, for in due time we shall reap our harvest if we do not give up. So then, while we have the opportunity, this Lenten season, let us do good to all. And he explained, let us not grow tired of praying, let us not grow tired of almsgiving, let us not grow tired of fasting. If you can read his uh, you know, the, the document where he explains this uh, theme for Lent, uh, it will be very good. So, my dear brothers and sisters, let us begin our Lenten journey with joyful confidence. May we feel deep within us that call to conversion, to return to God with all our heart, accepting His grace, which renews us, and transforms us, making us more like Jesus Christ, to become more Christ-like. May none of us be deaf to this appeal, which comes to us also in the simple but very meaningful light of the imposition of the ashes, with the priest saying, repent and believe in the gospel. May the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, and the model of all genuine disciples of Jesus Christ accompany us throughout this Lenten season. Dear brethren, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace these ashes which we will put on our heads in penitence.
O God, who are moved by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to works of penance, lend your merciful ear to our prayers, and in your kindness pour out the grace of your blessing on your servants who are marked with these ashes, that as they follow the Lenten of Servances, they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Please stand. Please stand. We are called today to turn away from all that separates us from God. Let us now turn back to the Father and seek His mercy and power to renew us in the way of Jesus. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that in prayer and work, it may always remain a sign of God's love in this world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Pope, Francis, and Archbishop William, that their prayers and sacrifices this Lent may be a source of hope and a new beginning for the suffering, the rejected, and the forgotten. In particular, we remember Pope Francis' call to fast for peace in Ukraine and an end to the sufferings of peoples of war-torn nations everywhere. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians, people around the world, that these 40 days may be a time for transforming the desert of division and conflicts into springs of reconciliation and community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those preparing for baptism and the Easter sacraments, that their Lenten pilgrimage may be a time of discovering more deeply the love and mercy of God in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, that we may adopt the Christian's attitude towards prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, and that these outward manifestations may be a reflective of a change in our inner dispositions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, look upon us as we enter this season of Lent, bearing the marks of ashes on our foreheads. May our fasting be a hunger for justice. May our alms be the means of peace and reconciliation. And may our prayers be the hopes we are prepared to work and sacrifice for. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Please rise. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleansed from our sins, may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for through bodily fasting, you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its reward through Christ our Lord. To him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, the gates we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also the brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please rise. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am Lord, not worthy Lord, that you should Lord, enter Lord, under Lord, my roof, but, but only say, say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion antiphon. He who ponders the law of the Lord day and night will yield fruit in due season.
Let's pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Pour out the spirit of compunction, O God, on those who bow before your majesty, and by your mercy may they merit the rewards you promised to those who do penance, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Hail Holy Queen, Mother, Mother of Mercy, mercy. Hail, hail our life, our, our sweetness, sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry for banished children of Eve. Of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley, valley of tears. tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes, eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell, Satan, and all the other evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. So it's like